The nice thing about uh, painting is you can change the time of day, you can change the sky. I'm going to add shadows to this, I think. And uh, so I'll brighten it up. I even may uh, make the water a little bit more aqua. Uh, it was a lot more noticeable when it was calmer. It was very aqua color. Um, so we'll see what we can do there. Maybe some thalo green. Um, but let's just uh, let's just get started. Okay, it's got this little uh, fast hut here. Let's put that right in here. Again, this is a this is a sketchbook. This is where you you play, you practice, you have fun. Uh, again, another thing about playing air paintings, I can move trees around. So there's a little railing on this little thatched roof area. Uh, there's a uh, little grill outside here. The water line is about here, so we'll sweep that across. And there's a palm tree that comes right down through the middle, but I think I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to move it a little bit more to the left here. And that comes into the foreground about here. Sweeps up real tall. Just kind of locate the basic shape of it there. And there's another one that comes from behind this little thatched hut. And, uh, I like the way that kind of sweeps up on this side. Not quite as tall. But again, there's another nice shape. And there's there's one over here also. Okay. Alright, I think that's let's put the water line in. Okay, the water line is right about here. Okay. Alright. I'm going to use uh, some new brushes I've got. They're by Zen, Z-E-N. Um, some round brushes, some flat brushes, a nice uh, rigger, uh, and also one of my old favorites. I always kind of use it, keep this brush all the time with me. So let's start by uh, throwing in the sky. And I'm going to go a little more colorful. All right, so let's start here. Let's start with some, uh, let's start with some quinacridone violet. Let's just throw some color in here. And some ultramarine blue. Now remember, watercolor is going to dry light, so uh, it might look perfect just the way you want it when it's wet. But you got to remind yourself it's going to go light, so you want to pump the colors a little bit stronger. Now I'm going to get into some lemon yellow, which is a nice color. We'll go a little bit warmer as we get towards the uh, horizon here. A little more violet. Maybe we'll have a cloud coming in through here or just a color, nice color. Let's just kind of drag a color in here real quick. Pick up the brush quick, otherwise you'll get a puddle here and it'll run down on you. And uh, you may not like what it, what it gives you. So let's just go down to the top of that thatched building. Okay, now we'll just look at it and decide what we want to do here. I think a little bit more blue, a little more violet. Actually, let's throw in a little bit of cadmium orange too, that'll be nice. Ah, uh, there we go. But I can keep playing with this until I get to where I think, okay, I like that. I think that'll dry the way I want it to.
All right, let's go to these Zen brushes now. I'm going to break up some of these hard edges. Go a little softer, just taking a brush with some clean water on it. I like some of those highlights in this, so I don't want to get rid of all of them. So I, I think that looks pretty good. I might go a little stronger up there. But let's, uh, let's just leave it right there for now. Sometimes you have to talk yourself into a, make some bold statements in here. The key is to run off your page. Otherwise, if you run this way and pick your brush up, you could get a, a puddle here and it's going to run down and create a blossom. So. I don't mind that. I think I'll probably leave most of that, uh, that shape right there. Maybe just soften it a little bit in the spot here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I gotta let that dry now before I put this, uh, put the water in. But I can come down here and do the foreground, which is these grassy colors. So let's come in here with some, uh, some sap green, ultramarine blue. Let's just lay some of that in here. As soon as I lay that in there and I look at my reference, it's, it's too green. I gotta add a little uh, gamboge to it or yellow ochre to it. Yeah, sap green and some gambos. But let's put the trunks in here. So I see Payne's gray. I see a little bit of burnt umber. And I think I'll even warm it up a little bit, just touch touch of orange in there. And it's always good to have a test sheet, which I don't have with me, but let's just uh, let's just go here. Okay, I think that's dry enough. And we'll pick up that trunk right down here. Right about there. Then we've got this larger one closer to us. This is here. I'm pushing down harder on the brush to get a wider stroke. And then there's another one here. And I'm resting my fingers on the paper. That allows me to control the thickness of the line. If you try to do it just up in the air, it's awful hard to stay on track. So let's go back over here. And right here, put that base underneath the, all the branches. This one's a little shorter. I think I'm going to lower it a little bit more. I don't want the same line with that one. Come down here. Okay, I'm going to push the shadows, just make it more interesting. I'm just going to run this shadow this way, just make a quick stroke. I'll do the same here and here too. And even though we don't see it, there could be a big palm tree off to our left um, that could be casting a nice shadow in here also. So. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean the tree or something is not there. So let's just kind of come in like that. Okay. Actually, this one, we might even see the top of this one. Okay. All right. This is still a little bit wet in certain areas. Let's go up and do the top of the trees here. Ultramarine blue, sap green. And some yellow. All right, let's just come in here. The wind's blowing from the right to the left, so most of these branches are going to be blowing to the right of the center here. Coming across this way. There's one that bows down this way. I'm using this as Zen rigor brush, which works really well for something like this.
I don't see any burnt sienna, but I know in some of them it's more of a burnt sienna color. So I'm just going to take burnt sienna, which will warm that up a little bit. and be a nice, a prettier color in there. There we go. Now it shows up a little better. Right. And once this dries a little bit, I'll go back in there with some uh, darker blue-greens. This one's really looks windblown, so it has a smaller top on it too. Um, but don't spend too much time looking at your reference. Look at your painting and decide what's going to look good. The, the subject matter gives you the suggestions, but then you've got to uh, take control of it and put in what's, uh, what's going to work for you. Okay, that's kind of like the first color in there. I'm going to put some darker colors in there also, darker blue-greens, but then I'll come back with some lemon yellow a little stronger so that'll show up. But um, while we're waiting for that, let's go to uh, let's go to this thatched roof. So that's mostly burnt umber and uh, a little bit of uh, Payne's gray. But I'm going to warm it up a little bit more. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, it's more of a burnt umber. Oh, that's pretty close. Now it's more of a, a, a brown, a gray brown, but um, I, I just want to I want to warm it up a little bit here. I'm putting a little bit of burnt sienna, a touch of cadmium orange in it, just to make it a little prettier. And we've got the posts that come down off of that. And there's that railing that comes across here. Now I could use that rigger for this because it makes a nice point, but also this, this round brush by Zen, number eight, um, works quite well. All right, and there's, also a, uh, there's also a picnic table underneath there. Let's kind of put that in, suggest it. And that sits down in here. Again, it's very, very suggestive. And the tops of these posts are in shadow. So I can definitely go darker there. And this one's way in the back. That can go dark. I don't need to go dark all the way down. The white is hitting it. Okay. And there's a grill out here also. Let's just put that grill in. It's just a couple of simple strokes here. Just a vertical stroke. Put a, put a post on it and there's a little bit of a base to it. Again, let's go a little darker in the shadow areas. Right, this, this is the time where we can add the, uh, the rough texture to it. Again, I could use the rigger for this also, but let's just stay with this. All 
and we're seeing underneath a little bit of the underneath area of this roof area. So let's just kind of put some uh, some of that overhanging thatched area, showing the back side of it. Now I'm going to go a little bit lighter value, a little bit warmer, and just put a little bit of that texture that's on this side. Now I don't need to show the whole thing. I just want to put a, just enough so that uh, we know what it is. And that we could even, maybe even there's a person in here. Right, maybe right here. Let's just put a person right in here. The water and a couple birds and we'll be done. Okay. All right, I gotta wait for that to dry to put the uh, water in. I'm gonna go with that uh, again with this Zen Rigger brush. Zen Rigger. Mm -hmm. It's number two. Um, and it's a full squirrel rigger. So now I don't want these birds to be real dark. Um, so I'm just going to uh, put a few out in here. Maybe there's one. Uh, you gotta be careful of the spacing of birds too. The tendency is to space everything out uh, equally spaced. And we don't want that. We definitely don't want that. So let's have one coming towards us here. And it could be more off that way. Okay, I think we stalled long enough that I can put that water in. I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Zen uh, flat brush, half inch flat brush. Find myself a clean spot on my palette here. I want this to be a nice, clean, clean aqua color. All right, so let's see. Let's take uh, let's take some phthalo green. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to put a touch of ultramarine blue with it, but not much. So I'm going to load my brush up. I want to do this in one stroke. So I'm just going to kind of take a couple practice strokes before I put the brush down. Because I don't want to go in here and go like this real slow. So I want to go for it. That little white right there, don't feel like you have to fill that in. That could be a little wave coming in. Um, and if you want to get this a little straighter, you can come back in here while it's wet. And maybe just another dark stroke to give a little more value to it in here. I turned the flat brush on its side. Okay, that works pretty good. Anyway, this is a playing on a hot day, doing some plein air painting. Say we're in Florida in the, the Keys. And uh, I hope this has been helpful.